Now we try to run PCA using R or RStudio. So this is the website and let's follow along with what's written on the website. It says here they will demonstrate how to apply and visualize PCA in R. There are many packages and functions that can apply PCA in R. And in this video we'll be using just one of them. In this post I will use the function PRCOMP or I think it's short for principal component from the stats package. I will also show how to visualize PCA in R using base R graphics. However, my favorite visualization function for PCA is ggbyplot. But unfortunately, ggbyplot is no longer stable or available in the source where we can download it. So we'll be using another way to plot the PCA results. So this is the steps. In this example, they use classical iris dataset, the same dataset that we use for HCA. The data contain four continuous variables, which corresponds to physical measures of flowers and a categorical variable describing the flower species. So to get access to the data, we just need to load the data. And since the data is built in R, we don't have to import it. We just have to invoke it. So let's go into R. I'm going to copy this first. We invoke the dataset iris using this function data and the name of the dataset iris. Press enter and we see it appear in our variable, in our global environment. The next step is we just like to preview what the data is about. So uh, there's a few ways where you can do this. One is just by um, using this way that they suggest, head iris and tree. Um, let's try this and show you uh, this one way where we can view the data. This head function uh, means we just see the first few rows of the data set. And since we specify three here, it means that we just see the first three rows. And here we can also see the number of columns in the data aside from just looking at the global environment. Here it says five variables, so we should expect five variables here. So one, two, three, four, and five. And we just see the first three rows because we specify it to be three. You can also view the data just by clicking on the var variable in the global environment and that opens up another window that shows us the data. Now we go on to the next step. It says we will apply PCA to our four continuous variables and use the categorical variable to visualize the PCs later, the principal components later. Notice that in the following code we apply a log transformation to the continuous variable as suggested by one uh, reference and set center and scale equal to true in the call to PRCOMP to standardize the variables prior to the application of PCA. This uh, is a data processing technique before running PCA to transform the data and after uh, applying this transformation it also sets in PCA so that the data is centered means that everything is normalized to a center value and also scaled accordingly so that there's not one variable that's too large compared to other variables because that could mess up the results of the PCA if you just use it as is without transforming it. So we use this line as suggested and see what it what uh, happens. So let me explain this one first. Here we this one is the dataset iris and we use all rows and uh, the, f the first one to four columns, that means this one, two, three, and four columns. We don't use the entire data set because there's one mm -hmm. column that is not a continuous variable. It's a factor variable. It's the, the column with the species name. So we can't run PCA through that because PCA requires data that are continuous or numeric. So we just uh, put all rows uh, for the columns one to four of this iris data set. Then we log it. We transform it. To, uh, and we put the results into this log.ir. So if I press enter, then you see um, another data frame is created with 150 observations similar to the iris, but with only four variables. We can actually uh, view the data of each of the columns just to uh, enforce the concept of the enforce the concept of log transformation to you. Uh, let's 
let's see if I just want to plot the distribution of the sepal length column. That's the distribution of the sepal length. I'll go to the next column. Sepal width. Okay, looks normal to me. And petal length. Okay, there's a bit of a problem here in the, in the data. And another one is petal width. Also similar. So from here, you could see there could be some problems with running PCR on the data as is or in its original form because of the, the difference in distribution of the data between those columns. Let's say now we've already uh, logged the data and we put it inside this log.ir variable and you'd like to see the distribution of the log or transform data. So I, I do the same thing, his. Um, now it's log.ir and then the sample length. So we can compare this distribution with the previous distribution. Okay, it looks about the same. Let's see the problematic one. Um, let me replot one of it so it's side by side, petal width, or petal length, and then we plot the log IR version of petal length. So here we, the distribution doesn't doesn't get fixed, but we see between this uh, non-transformed data and this transformed data, we see that uh, it's uh, closer together now compared to previously. So it's somewhere it's centered. It is more centered compared to the previous version. So that's what transform does. It maintains the variation of the data, but it transform them to similar forms or centered data so that you'll be able to run PCA and there will not be any bias between the different variables. Okay, so that's a bit of a detour from the steps that we took it's just to reinforce the idea of transformation. Uh, you don't, in the end, you don't really care about the magnitudes of the data, you actually care about the grouping of the data later on and the grouping should, should be dependent on the distribution of the data um, the variation of data instead of the actual magnitudes of the data, so that's why you are able to transform the data like that. Okay, this next line is just preserving the the last column of the iris data set, which is the species. So here you see inside this IR species is just the, the tree species, and the order is similar to this, because uh, we, you see that we separated this iris into just the numeric value in log IR, and then the factor or the species value in IR species. Here we copy the command, paste it here. This function applies on this, is applied to this log.ir dataset and we center the data and we scale it so that the data becomes normalized so not one column or uh, large values of data in a few columns would dominate the other columns. And press enter and you've run PCA, it's that simple in R. If you notice, 80% of the steps to run PCA is mostly on preparing the data. For example, here we have the log transformation data, uh, log transformation of the data set, and then the viewing of the data before actually running the, and then another line here that, that extracts the species column into another data set before running the PCA. So, but the PCA itself, or the actual analysis itself, is just one line or, compared to the many other lines that you use to prepare the data for the analysis. <clears throat> We've run PCA, and now let's go through the, the writings here. It says, since skewness and the magnitude of the variables influence the resulting PCs, it is good practice to apply skewness transformation center and scale the variables. That's what we did when we set it as true here. Prior to the application of PCA, in the example above, we applied a log transformation to the variable, but we could not. We could have been more general and applied a box and cox transformation. See at the end of this post how to perform all these those transformations and then apply PCA. But we won't, won't go to that to that because it's out of the scope for this video. 
So we've run the analysis, and what do we do with the results? The precomp function returns an object of class precomp. So let's see. Um, it puts it into this variable called ir.pca, the results of the PCA. And this is an object of precomp, of class precomp, which have been met, which have some methods available. The print method returns the standard deviation of each of the four PCs and their rotation or loadings, which are the coefficients of linear combinations of the continuous variables. Here you see the, okay, let's just run this inside our R console. There we get to see the results. The standard deviation here is the standard deviation for each one of these PCs. So 1.7124583 is the standard deviation for PC1. 0.9523 is the, piece, is the standard deviation of PC2, so on and so forth. And these are the PCs. And you notice we have four variables that we run PCA, so that's why we have four principal components. And these are the loadings or rotations. Now the plot method returns the plot of the variances, the y-axis associated with the PCs, x-axis with the principal components. The figure below is useful to decide how many PCs to retain for further analysis. In this simple case, with only four PCs, it's not a hard task, and we can see that the first two PCs explain most of the variability in the data. So yes, it's true because uh, the largest variance is the first, obviously, but the second is also not that small, but the third and fourth is very small. That makes us think that we should be able to remove the third and fourth PCs. So let's recreate this inside R. I'll just copy this and paste. Um, this is a plot function. Uh, it plots the object IRPCA and then we want to plot the line type of plot. And we recreate the same plot that we saw in on the website. Now the, another way to look at the results of the PCA is to run a summary method which describes the importance of the PC. The first row again uh, describes the standard deviation associated with each PC. Let's just do that ourselves. The importance of the, of the components, PC1, the standard deviation is 1.7, the portion of variance is 0.7 and the cumulative is 0 0.7 here. For PC2, it's uh, the standard deviation is 0 0.9, but notice that the PC2 uh, variance is 0 0.2. Um, proportion, this is not actual variance, but these are percentages of the variance. So the first PC has a 73% uh, variance of the data, 22% comes from PC2, 3% only comes from PC3, and 0.6% and, um, for PC4, so that's why we can remove PC3 and PC4 because it only accounts for 3% uh, and 0.6% respectively from the overall variance of the data. We can also use the predict function if we observe new data and want to predict their principal component values. So just for illustration purposes, we pretend that the last two rows of the iris data has just arrived and we want to see what their PC values are for just these two values. We run the code here, we predict on the IRPCA object, and we will just use the last two values of the, the last two means comes from this tail function, the last two rows of this log.ir, and we predict and we get to see the PCs of those new two variables. Now let's plot PC1 against PC2. Let me just explain uh, what this plot is all about. It's actually a plot that you've seen before. It's just the PC1 against PC2, principal component 1 against principal component 2 plot. And it shows the three different groups based on the species of the data that, species of the flowers inside the data set. To create this plot, we run this code, but we can't um, use this GG by plot, so we will have to skip this and I will show you a different way on how to create this plot. We need to uh, skip this because we don't have the information for this. So let us create our own plot. We will use this type of plot. We use this style um, to create the plot. Here, we use, use a simple plot function and then the, the PC comp object and the columns. So we just want to plot the first two columns. I'm going to copy this and then I am going to um, modify it. So this is for a different object. 
I use now for log.ir and we plot it just for the first two components, first two visible components. PCH20 is just the size of the marker. Color is the, the sample color. Color of the different categories. So the category stays within this ir.species function. Uh, not function, but then the variable. This is the x limit of the plot and the y limit of the plot. We probably have to adjust this later. So let me just plot this first. Run this. Okay, we have to remove this one first because we don't know what the limit is. And run. Actually, I should plot it as ir.pca. Okay, I need to change this and run this. Yeah, so we get to produce the plot. And then we, we, we actually can see quite clearly this is one category. Uh, While well, there's an overlap between these two categories. So let's see whether we'll be able to draw a circle that separates the two. So we can do that using this function called data ellipse. Again, I would have to change it to the current situation, which is ir.pca. This is ir.pca. We sample, we group it based on the species. I am not sure what the species are. I think it starts off with setosa, if I refer to this one. And then versi color. Well, this one is uh, virginica. Virginica. The rest should be the same. So I put here the plot dot points is equals to false because I do not want to redraw points on top of all points. The levels um, of the circle that we the ellipse that we draw to categorize the data is only up to fifty percent confidence level. You can adjust this if you want. We add it onto the existing plot, yes. We fill it, yes, with a color, but then we don't make it too uh, solid so that we get to see through it. And we color it black, red, and green. So this is a plot on top of this plot there. So the results show that through PC, uh, when you plot PC1 against PC2, you're able to differentiate Setosa from Versicola and Virginica, and if you remember from our HCA example, the this is not a problem to separate Setosa from both of this Versicola and Virginica species. But uh, again, in PCA, we see that there is a problem when we try to separate the two, Versicola and Virginica here, um, because of the some overlaps in characteristics uh, of the flowers that causes them to be uh, mis- misidentified when um, grouping them in using PCA.